Welcome to Moss Marketing Monday, a.k.a. the M3 Podcast. Brought to you by Moss Marketing Group. Bringing you everything marketing every Monday. Stay tuned for marketing tips and tricks you can use today. The M3 Podcast, marketing knowledge to help you succeed. Let's get started. Welcome back to the M3 Podcast. Today, Dre, Dalton, myself, and we have Steve with Over the Field Landscaping on today. Welcome on, Steve. What up, Steve? Glad to be here. Steve uh, runs and operates a local landscaping business located here out of Liberty. I know your headquarters isn't in Liberty, correct? It's technically in Oric, but 15 minutes outside of Liberty, but eventually we will move our location to Liberty. You, most of the, the work you do is out of Liberty. Yep, so. Liberty, that Liberty, uh, Kansas City line. Yeah, most of the North land. Mm-hmm. So, Steve, how long have you been in business? So, we are in year number six. Okay. Um, we uh, obviously started in 2016 and just, you know, got a couple of jobs. It was kind of an accident on how this business got started. I did not ever see myself... <laughs> starting a landscaping <laughs> business, it just uh, boiled down to circumstance, and I did what I could with what I had. Um, I, uh, you know, went through a hardship just like everybody else um, at some point in their life, and I needed to make some money, and I had a wheelbarrow, a truck, and a couple of tools, and sold a couple of jobs, and just kept on springing off of the couple of jobs I sold, so... The American dream. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Wheelbarrow, a shovel, and a truck. That's right. That's you can make right. anything <laughs> happen. <laughs> hey, so did that's you right. do landscaping before that, though? Uh, so I learned, uh, I worked for a company for two years learning it. And previously to that, I was in the restaurant industry. So going from the restaurant industry to construction, basically, yeah. I realized how much more satisfaction you get from completing a job versus the restaurant industry, the job's never done. So I basically fell in love with building stuff, which I'd never done before uh, within the two years that I worked for another company and uh, just realized, like, that was what I wanted to do. The sense of satisfaction from completing a job is, is unmatched. So That, that kind of leads into the full story of, of Steve. Yeah, yeah. Landscaper Steve. Is Landscaper <laughs> Steve. If you guys follow me on any of my uh, social media outlets, it's always Landscaper Steve checking in. Um, but yeah, so what? So I always did side jobs on the uh, after my normal job at the landscape company, um, and I was pulling my paycheck in a weekend versus the five days I was working for a company. And so I finally one year sold a a sixty five hundred dollar job at the beginning of a season. And uh, I didn't have a wall hammer or nothing. The client didn't know this, but I had her pay for a wall hammer (laughs) on the block delivery. Um, And I busted this job out. It took me two weeks to do a wall, which now would take us about half that time. Um, And I cashed a $2,000 profit check in two weeks. And then at that point, I was hooked. Um, Because at that point, I never made more than that. So... Uh, and then after that, you know, I posted some pictures online. Social media has been very, very important, uh, to the growth of this business. Posted some pictures online. The first couple of years we were doing anything that anybody was writing a check for landscaping (laughs) or not. Um, and some of those jobs I was making minimum wage just because I didn't know enough to charge correctly. So, but you know, you do enough jobs, you learn and next thing you know, we're, you know, we're doing, you know, close to uh, a good amount of money a year. <laughs> so, You're building your empire. <laughs> Correct, yes. So on that journey coming up, like, that was news to me. I didn't even know you were in the restaurant industry before yeah. landscaping. Yeah. 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 So that's something that was news to all of us right now. And right. I've known you for a long time. Right, right, right. And I think sometimes the story from the very beginning, someone all coming up is very intriguing on yeah. – what what'd you do in the restaurant industry? What led you into the landscaping? And you've kind of touched on that that push from working for someone to yourself. Right. But what led you along that line? So 
if you didn't know I was in the restaurant industry, you definitely don't know this. Um, I worked as a general manager for about five years at Papa John's, and I got let go over some corporate hodgepodge or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, but uh, we don't need to go into that details. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I started working for a smaller pizza company uh, called Northern Lights Pizza, and whenever I got there with my experience, I found out that the Kansas City market was either going to be sold or shut down. And so I talked to the owners and basically convinced them to sell me two stores with zero money down with a signature. So I actually owned a couple of uh, pizza restaurants for about three years. I ran those, um, and it was just really tough. Uh, I felt like I was a stepping stone for them to make their market up in uh, Iowa successful because I was paying fees on food, fees on Franchise fees, fees, and fees, and fees, and fees. Um, and then one day I was just like, I'm done with this. Um, but the management experience end up, ended up, and the owner experience ended up translating into my current company. Just in Papa John's, I didn't see the numbers. In the Northern Lights pizza, I did. But I learned a lot of management from Papa John's and numbers from Northern Lights. So... That translated into where I'm at now growing this company um, and just using that knowledge to, you know, make the labor force that we have. Uh, I don't even know how to say it, but it's just it's just translates. Yeah. And I think from, I mean, Dalton, Dre and myself, we've all been out on job sites with you and your company on mm -hmm. building and the proficiency side of being out on a job and the management, I always have a respect for watching someone manage people right. and doing, nice it, hustle, doing sure. it well. And you have that with your, I don't know, your employees, everyone that works with you, yeah. that it just is a well-oiled machine when you watch all your guys that it, it's very cool to watch. And we try to relay that via video yeah. and it can only be done so much. Yeah, uh, so uh, the managing people is my strong suit. So uh, have you ever heard the saying where, would you rather have a lion leading a pack of monkeys or a monkey leading a pack of lions? Um, I consider my, <laughs> hope my employees <laughs> don't watch this, but I consider myself a lion leading a pack of monkeys. Um, I can manage, you know, seven guys on a job and knock out a, a job in a week versus, you know, having a couple guys that don't know what they're doing, it would take two weeks. So yeah. um, I try to utilize every guy I have to do something, even if it's as small as cleaning up way before we need to. Or my idea on a job site is to start everything that needs to be done by skill and then have the guys come in and do everything that doesn't be need to be done by skill. So that's what I've learned is to uh, – how to keep the guys moving that don't have skill basically. And that's okay. Some, we need people that, you know, just show up to work every day. So yeah. into that, I know I've spoke with Dalton about it, that with us running marketing, that everyone can know that we work together. You're someone that we work with. Um, we run all of your social media marketing, all digital marketing, yeah. everything like that. And Dalton's one of the heads that manages all that. Right. And, there's a lot of factors that come into a business like yours. And this is something that Dalton brought more to me when season was coming to an end and we're just rocking and rolling, blowing through everything. Right. And this is something that Dalton's kind of brought up to me. I'll, I'll let him touch more on that subject on um, the seasonal business kind of. Yeah. So. No. So, I mean, I even have experience in the landscape business. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it for a couple of years and I know, you know, seasonally like things change. Right. Like, you definitely have to change or navigate your business in a different direction. Correct. Um, so, I mean, can you talk about that for us? And, like, was that a challenge for you? Did you already kind of know how you were going to do that? I mean, when you first started six years ago? Right. So, seasonal businesses are what big old dummies go into business for. <laughs> so, uh, meaning that you're at the mercy of weather. You're at the mercy of just ground conditions. Um a snow, 
that comes early in the year doesn't just stop you for that day. It stops you for the day after and the next day. Or you can push through it and create a bigger mess and then pay to fix that mess. And sometimes that's what you got to do. Um, but seasonal work is very tough because it's actually probably the toughest uh, business to manage people in because people get used to a 40, 50 hour paycheck and you get a whole week of rain and they're off. And next thing you know, like they don't say anything, but they're like, Hey, I still got bills to pay. And so do I, you know? So, um, I have to find ways to, um, keep the guys busy during rain days or, uh, winter months, which is a lot of shop work, a lot of cleaning trucks, a lot of, you know, just doing whatever the company needs. But what I've done to combat that is over the years, we've built up our snow removal route um, pretty big to where it covers the nut of the business and pays the guys enough to get by, which I don't even like saying that because I want my guys to thrive. But um, at some point, we want to have... We're, we're teaching our guys to save and, and to prepare for the winter. Um, but at some point, you know, I would love to have a staff, our core guys that we pay year round. And what we have implemented this year is 10% of everything that comes into our company goes into a separate account at a different bank account It's called the winter fund. And so basically that will keep our guys paid our core foreman paid and also it'll allow us to uh give tasks that aren't necessarily needed to the lower guys just to get them some money in their pocket so that was a huge step that we implemented this year and it took us you know we're year number six to figure that out uh so there's been a lot of trial and error going on there i think with watching from our side back to the seasonal conversation I'm not going to use any names, but there were some pretty big... Why'd you just look at me? <laughs> you literally just I, stared I, directly I, at me. He's like, I'm not going to use any names. He's, he's not the big name <laughs> I was going to drop. You're not doing Dre's home yeah. snow removal. That's <laughs> right, right, right. That's you got Dre's idea. snow removal, so it's a pretty <laughs> big deal. <laughs> Dr. Dre yeah. snow. But you did pick up a lot of really big commercial accounts mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. That Did that change what that seasonal deal look the seasonal months that yeah so so the account that we actually picked up was waffle house uh we do snow management for all of our for all of our local waffle houses and uh that changed every shout out waffle house love waffle house (laughs) exactly (laughs) ever hungry they never close (laughs) they never close so um but uh yeah that actually was picked up through social media because of you guys. And that actually helped us more or less change the way we're going to operate snow for the future. So if we get a waffle house or a company like that, then that allows us to put the lower guys in more snow trucks. And if you're in a truck, we're going to be able to make more money and I'm going to be able to pay those guys a little bit better during the winter. And, at the end of the day, like, I just want to make sure my guys are paid. I want everybody on my team to be successful. Now, whether they want it or not, that's up to them. But my goal is to bring the core guys to be successful. It's very so, admirable. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's huge. That. Yeah. I was going to say, one of the things I was going to touch on is how, like, say if you're in a business that's not landscaping. Right. And I know you kind of touched on how you set a winter fund mm-hmm. and everything for, like, just say a concrete company and you right. specifically lay concrete. You go into that winter months and the ground's hard, stuff like that. How would you, in your position, dealing with those seasonal jobs, how would you tackle something like that if you were in a different industry trying to grow your company? So if I was in a different industry going into the winter months, uh, winter's tough for everybody. Um, I mean, I, I'm always more of a, 
People always say, what's your plan? What's your plan? I don't ever have a plan. I have a strategy. <laughs> if this if this happens, then we pivot one way or the next. Now, the plan is linear, but the strategy goes like this. Um, I'm always looking for new ways to find revenue or looking for new ways to make sure that my guys at least have enough money to 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 get to the next level in their life. Now, like I said, whether they want it or not, that's not up to me. But but uh, that's where I'm always at. I'm always trying to find the best way to make sure that my guys are, are getting paid. One word that I've heard in there that I keep, even though we're on episode four, I have a feeling it's going to be a word that's heard a lot, and it's pivot. Yeah. yeah. That as sure. more business owners come on, those are the people I feel like that pivot the quickest, that adapt the quickest. On that pivoting side, you're six years in. Right. You've been running a business longer than I have. Right. Six years ago, I'm pretty sure, uh, what is, 2022? Six years ago, I was... Were you in college? in college? I think I was still in college. <laughs> like 26, 2016. No, I'm trying to do yeah, the math right now. I was still in college. You didn't pass hey. pass math, did you? Yeah, <laughs> that was actually that was good. At I will say he, he's very good at he's very good at numbers. Yeah, <laughs> not always super fast with him, but <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but when you look at that, you, you pivot, and business owners, and the more people that we all run into that are successful and have done well in business, they've learned to adapt and pivot on that quick, like you said, the winter fund. That's right. pivoting. That's figuring out a different way to how to retain staffing that retain you don't want to lose because correct, yeah. what most people that we see on early business owners is they don't see the cost that goes into training people all the time. The cost of you and your foreman training someone over and over and over and over, that's money that your business is losing. Right. So on that pivoting side, what have you done over six years that you've had to pivot and adapt to, to on those hard times. Yeah. So uh, a couple things we pivoted on is um, uh, consistent income. Whenever we're doing month long jobs, we don't get paid till the end of the job. So last year, I bought a mowing company that already had some accounts, um, which is you know weekly or bi weekly income coming in, just a little bit. You know, we had. I don't know, 70 or 80 lawns last year, but that money coming in, um, we would bill a monthly, but it would all come in within the first week of the month. And sometimes that was helpful to be able to get that cash flow going. So we, we bought, we acquired a lawn mowing company, um, which allowed us to also put our foot in the door to some other clients. So just because we mowed their lawn, we have built, you know, thousand dollar, thousands of dollar landscapes for that client just for mowing their lawn, you know. So that helped us pivot. Um, I also found a void in Kansas City. The big pool companies that are the big, the big dogs that build pools are booking two to three years out. So, um I have built patios and walls around pools. I've personally built 20 or 30 <laughs> pools over the years for another company. So we pivoted into that market. We got four or three pools sold this year. Fourth one we're working on. And, and, th- and that all came within. I remember sitting at the gym and you're like, hey, man, we're going to go us at 6, 30, 7 o'clock in the morning at the gym. Get done. We're sitting in the sun. You're like, hey, man, I want to rock pools. Yeah. I want to do pools. I think there's a big problem here. We start ads on them, and it was Dane actually said, uh, "Give me thirty minutes till I get back to the office." <laughs> All right, then uh, yeah. then we go over. <laughs> yeah. But how fast did that fill up? So we have three pools sold uh, right now. So uh, I'll just be transparent. That's two hundred twenty five thousand dollars worth of sales right there, and we are going to be doing those pools in a week to two weeks. So, um, you know that puts us to the next level of of sales and uh the the pool industry is really bad because they subcontract out everything walls patios uh we can do the walls the patio and the pool so i i saw that void and i was like if we can do it all why are we not doing it and we're being picky and choosy on the pools we do we do do so 
um, yeah, it was just again, again, it was like I saw a, a void, and I, I was like, well, we're gonna pivot into. I think that's how. Tools. That's how a lot of companies are made too. Mm-hmm. That that's exactly why we're all sitting here today. Yeah, was I was in a space that we paid. I don't know how many marketing companies. Astronomical amount of yeah. just money into those marketing companies. But we had multiple to pay. marketing companies. Multiple yeah. companies. Multiple yeah. market. We had different marketing companies that we had to pay for content. We had to pay an ad company. We had to pay a social management company. We had to pay website people. We had to pay all these different people. And it was just like, I looked and I looked and I looked trying to find someone that did all of it under one roof. Right. And it was like, there was nothing out there. Right. Like, we only do this. We only do this. We only do this. So we went into it that we're still right now, we're getting printing companies that work for us that right. will handle all of our printing needs. We are working on radio and TV, and we handle all social. We have SEO companies that work with us. Right. We we handle website builds and designs. So it's if you work with us, anything that you need done marketing-wise – can be handled through us. Right. And I think that's where you came into a space that once again, same need that I want a pool built. And the guy's like, yeah, I'll put a pool in your backyard. Then you're going to end up with a big gravel circle around it. Yeah. So you're going to have to find somebody to do a patio around it. And then you're actually going to need a retaining wall around the outside of it. You're going right. to have to find another guy to go do that. Yeah. And that's and, what, that's what we saw. Cause all last year with probably within five or six pools, we were the company building the walls and the patio around pools. And you could tell visibly by the client's face, like they were just distraught with the whole process of a pool being built. And I feel like a lot of it was because there were so many different contractors that really no one was in charge. I literally pulled up to a a job site where a pool was built, didn't even tell the client that um, they needed this wall. And by the time it was said and done, it was a 35,000 wall that the client didn't plan for. And I walked in the backyard. I go, who's in charge? And they all looked around like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to be in charge today? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Guess it's me for and today. And so, like, I, I shit you not, that was the day that I probably ta- I probably talked to you the next day. I'm like, what is this nonsense? Yeah. Because these people, and I'll get a little personal on, the, on those clients. I'm not going to say names or anything, but they were going through marital problems because of this pool. And I'm like, that's not right. We can do it all. So, um, I don't know. It just it just really rubbed me the wrong way that there was a company that was selling hundred thousand dollar pools and they weren't doing any of the work. Like, what are you just putting your name on it? Like, it just it drove me nuts. So we decided to get in the pools, and um, so far so good. The f- yeah. the first thing I immediately think of that is like when someone's going to buy a vehicle, mm-hmm. that is an investment you have saved up for, and right. you have the opportunity to go buy something where it could be your biggest or second biggest purchase you make. Right. And a pool is something that where it's not a need, but that is something where you save and you have an opportunity to put a pool at your house and you, that should be an exciting moment in someone's life. And then for that situation, you just said where it causes issues in your household of stress of stuff like that, that should be a happy moment. And I know the clients you're dealing with now, they are over the top ecstatic. Right. And in that instance, I, if that was the case, I would be like, you have bad blood in that house. I don't want the pool. I don't want any of that. And I feel like that just leads to cancel. You're going to look at that pool and think about all the headache versus all the fun. Yes. So, because uh, they're, they're saying a negative stroke is 15 times powerful than a positive stroke. So they're going to literally have to swim in that pool. 15 times before they realize that it's a positive thing. And um, that comes to that I've known you for quite a while now. And it comes to a customer service deal. We live in a customer service world right. that the people with the best customer service, like I preach it to every single person that's here about our customer service and how we work with someone. I think you've texted me probably at like 11 o'clock at night and been like, hey, what are your thoughts on this, blah, blah, blah. And he's yeah. like, you, you can text me tomorrow. Like not yeah. expecting me to text back, but it's, I just want that pers- like personal level. Yeah, absolutely. That I love what we do. And I can tell that you're the exact same way. Absolutely. That 
I could be having a job done by you, and you could I could text you at eleven o'clock at night, and you would still be back with them. Right. And I think that customer relation. How important do you see that in? Well, I always your space? say I say this. Um, we're not necessarily a hardscape or pool business. We're a people business. At the end of the day, we got our people to take care of, and we got our clients to take care of. If you don't have your people helping you do the job or the clients that are buying your product, then what do you have? You don't. You don't have nothing. So at the end of the day, we we take care of our people. Um, I have learned over the years that fair is not equal. Fair is not equal. Everybody's like, treat everybody fair, and they think that it's always across the board equal. So I treat every one of our employees fairly, meaning differently, because they're not all the same person. They were, didn't have the same upbringing. Um, they aren't the same skill level. Our clients, same way. They're not the same person ever. Um, so we treat them fairly, and I'm uh, what I call a word hustler. Whenever people talk about certain things or just in a normal conversation, they bring up, you know, details about their personal life hidden in the conversation. If you start, if you go into a conversation and you notice the details that they bring up, like if they bring up plants more than twice in a conversation, then they really love plants. Or they bring up their dogs more than twice in a conversation. Then you build on that and you use that as a, a, a way to create a, to eliminate the barrier and to build trust. And so whenever my employees bring up things like that, like, hey, you know, something's going on, or they hide it within the conversation, then you slowly learn to have them or to go after what they need. And you, how do I say it? What they need, they won't tell you directly. But if you help them, like, you know, if somebody needs help getting their license back. They won't tell you directly that, but they'll bring up, yeah, I wish I had my license, you know? So a couple of our guys, we have, you know, sought out, what, what do we need to do to help you get your license back? And so far we have helped one person get our light, get their license back. And that person now is doing really good in the company. So it's like, you have to be a word hustler and that, that boils down the customer service, not necessarily with the, your clients, but also with your employees. I feel like that kind of leads in just to caring for people yeah, and being a good person. Right. And I've always been like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always been that person that I don't, I don't, I don't care about the business is great and all like that's what we focus on. And it, there's so much that's directly correlated to that. But at the end of the day, be a good person. Right. Whatever you have to do for the people within your company, be a good person to those people. Mm-hmm. If those people ever feel like they're not cared about, that they're not taken care of, right. that any person that works, I say with me, I hate the terminology of when people uh, work for dude, me. I, like, I, I, I don't say I hate that. I don't say that. Like I just feel like that's like the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Like my business cards, work I don't even put a me, title yeah. on it. My business cards because it irritates me. Mm-hmm. It's these people work with you. Right. Care for those people. Take care of those people. Those are the people that are running into war with you every day. Right. And I think that's when you care for those people and you care for people that you work with. I don't even really like the terminology customer. Right. I think it's somebody you're working with also. Yeah. That we work with you. You're not a customer of ours. Right. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's like a customer. I'm like, no, that's Landscaper Steve. <laughs> I'm like, Steve that's my like friend. That. Landscaper Steve, <laughs> a.k.a. Yeah. Type he was at like, Halloween. <laughs> that, that's, a separate, that's a separate story <laughs> where Steve comes on another yeah. time. <laughs> we'll do the Halloween podcast. And next Halloween. I'll be tight pants, yeah. Steve, okay? But <laughs> that's something that you were at our Halloween party here. Right. So many people that we work with have became very good friends and close friends of ours. Absolutely. That it's so much more than work and business, but it's just being a good person. And we can. that's why you're company runs as a well oil machine it's because yeah. you care for those people you help them on a personal level not just a business level right and i think that kind of leads into i feel like that's lessons that a lot of business owners probably need to look at over six years of owning your own company those management those skill sets if you looked at some 
if you looked at Steve six years ago, what would you tell Steve six years ago about management and running people? Running people, like what would I tell Steve <laughs> six years ago would be to invest in uh, Bitcoin. But anyways, no. What I tell myself six years ago uh, would be to. Um, Always, wow, always, that, always thinking that, about investing in Bitcoin. Now right. he's like, wow, how much he's <laughs> doing the numbers? He's like, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. Rain Man over there right now, <laughs> figuring the numbers of how much Bitcoin you'd have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I would be. Uh, I would. I would say, you get what you pay for. So I would. I would pay my guys more back in the day, and then do more research on how to bid a job properly. Um, so if you want to take it just to the business aspect, it would be to how to bid jobs properly. I mean, like I said, we don't we don't need just the. I, I want business. I want personal. I want. I think so many people focus just on the business side, right? Which if the personal side's not there, the business side doesn't work, right? So Steve, six years ago, was Steve six years ago going to the gym every morning? No, and no. that, that is actually a huge factor to my mental health. More than my physical health. And, yeah. uh, I think everybody should have, even if it's, you know, a couple of days a week, a workout routine. Um, to me, the gym is like my happy place. And it's it, it allows me to to know that I'm doing something in the morning to get my headspace right. To go in to battle, like you said earlier. Uh, I have to go to battle every day. I have to put out fires every day. I have to work my ass off every day, sling, you know, 90-pound blocks every day. Um, and then the sense of accomplishment you get once you start seeing results at the gym and you just feel confident, and confident is what sells jobs, uh, confident is what keeps you chipper around your guys. Um, you know, the workout regimen would definitely be on the top. And then the second lead would be, what books are you listening to? What are you feeding your mind? There's a guy named Zig Ziglar. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. <laughs> but uh, he said, uh, what if I walked in your house and dumped a bunch of trash on your living room floor? What would you do? Well, I'd be pretty pissed, <laughs> right? So if you are feeding your mind with a bunch of trash that you see on the news or whatever, um, you're probably going to live the piss-off lifestyle. But if you're feeding yourself with uh, motivational speeches, books, um, quotes. Um, those things are super helpful, not only to you, but you tend to regurgitate some of the stuff you ingest on the positive spectrum to other people, and it could be a uh, something that changes their whole day or changes their whole life. You know, I post motivational quotes and stuff online, and I can't tell you how many people have just I've never met reached out to me and said I needed that today, type of stuff. So I would be more focused on uh, just uh, personal development because at the end of the day, you know, if you work on yourself more than your job, then that's going to translate into your job, and and you'll become a better person and help people around you. Hopefully, so I c- I could not agree more <laughs> with that. I mean, you nailed that one. <laughs> yeah, and. It's it's very much, I think, that personal development is a lot of times overlooked. And, I mean, right. I've been guilty of it, that I get so engulfed in work and we get busy, and it's the first thing people do is when they get so busy with work is take away from their personal right. life of if that's taking care of themselves at the gym, if that's doing something with their significant other, if that's hanging out with their family, doing all these other things that – bring true happiness and joy to someone, which correlates down the line of that business success. Right. That if that, per, if that leader in charge is not in the correct headspace, that's who everyone's looking to all the time. Yeah. And I think that's a lot too with watching your, I see your, your post every single day. Yeah. I, I love seeing them every day. Mm-hmm. It's just like I know that in the morning I'm probably getting to the gym and Steve's probably posting I'm going to see something. Yeah. That I'm, I'm and those those posts aren't necessarily for other people; they're also for me. Um, 
I know it sounds kind of weird, but maybe it doesn't. Uh, whenever everybody, you know, you check your phone all the time. Everybody does. Everybody's guilty. Every time someone likes it, you check your phone, and guess what I do? I reread that positive post, and then it re-solidifies that whole thing in my head. It helps me as much as it helps other people. Um, so I, I always tell people, like, I don't post those necessarily for other people. It's, it's for me, too. Yeah. Um, even if... <laughs> the post that I post, I'm not doing at all, <laughs> you know, but maybe if I look at it 18 times in that day, then maybe I'm going to get 1% better at that, you know? So, um, but yeah, those, the positive, uh, food that you feed your brain is super important. Um, and just like anything, it comes with moderation. If you get too caught up in that, then your brain will get tired been there before where I did nothing but eat positive content and then my brain gets tired and then I shut down. Um, so, you, so that's why I post once, once a day. So, yeah. Well, I, I think when you just said that, you said, I just try to get better, 1% right. better. But as long as you're always trying to get better, no matter at what it is, right. whether it's your personal life, whether it's work, whether anything, as long as you're just trying to achieve to be a better individual – I think you'll always be successful. Yeah, it's just one percent better, a little bit better every day. Um, it's uh, it's better to, in my opinion, to judge it per week. Did you do a little bit more last week? It's hard to it's hard to um, uh, how do I say it? Uh, manage or uh, scale how much you do in a day. But if you look at your week, and that's what it boils back down to is reflection. Reflect on your last week. Did you do more than you needed to last week, or um, did you do less than you needed to last week, or did you stay the same? I think staying the same or doing more is okay. Yeah, and as long as you don't do less, <laughs> I'm I'm always on progression of doing one up of the following week. I've mm -hmm. just always put that on my my own shoulders, mm -hmm. and I am very guilty of doing this. And I have instilled it in Madison, my she, my girlfriend. She is phenomenal at it. Yeah at writing out what she needs to do every single day yep. of writing out those things and almost time blocking it out. And I've, I've worked with managers and things like that that did a lot of time blocking and trying to get the most out of every day. Mm -hmm. I'll say the most successful day in the last week I had was the day that I lined out every single thing I need to get done. Yeah. And I just busted it out. And then all of a sudden it was like, one o'clock in the day, I'm like, whoa, I already got everything done for the day. Yeah, <laughs> but normally no, there's like things that kind of interfere with those during the day. Granted, you're in the spot that you're out busting your ass, moving stones all day and building a wall. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're yeah. not doing that. St Steve's at the way. gym all day. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get that. Pretty much working out all day. We're not. <laughs> Swole but, Steve <laughs> checking. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> so, no, but lists actually have a huge. Uh, I use lists too, not not every day. Um, lists have a huge psychology factor because every time you check off a list, it gives you a boost of dopamine, yeah. and so at some point your brain will connect checking off a list to that boost of dopamine, and do, dopamine is what really keeps everybody going. Um, but uh, yeah, we use lists a lot uh, at our office. So my office manager. Uh, every Monday we write down a list, and I say, check this off. If you get stuck, move on to the next thing. Call me once a day, and I'll answer your questions. Don't call me every single time you have a question. <laughs> Anyways, um, but uh, we use lists just like our, you know, our job list. So we got all of our jobs lined out on the whiteboard, and um, not only is completing the job, collecting the check important, but whenever we – erase the job off the whiteboard, everybody sees that. You know, only a few people see the first two parts. The third part, everybody sees that. And progress always wins, so people start seeing progress and us moving forward, and, and it just motivates everybody. I'll probably say one of the most motivational things I watch every day is Dalton sits straight across from me at the office, and it's like whiteboard central with where yeah. we're at. Right. But every that single morning when Dalton gets in, he writes out every single thing he has to do on his whiteboard. Yeah. It's and important. it's every single day. I'm looking at this whiteboard from my desk, seeing things. I'm like, ah, we need to get that done. Yeah, you're like, like, holy crap, that's a lot. I'm like, there's a lot of things <laughs> yeah. on that list. Yeah. I'm like, half of which I didn't even think of. But he has it listed out. 
day in and day out. I know every single day that I'm going to look straight across my desk. I'm going to see Dalton's desk, and behind him, I'm going to see this whiteboard that's going to have everything yeah. that he's listing out for all these accounts. Right. That needs to be done immediately. Dalton, do you think that is something that, as business owners, a lot of people watching this are business owners, do you think that's something that correlates to a lot of their success? I mean, I think it could, yeah. I mean, I think having a plan going into each day is pretty vital. I mean, if you come in here, you show up, and you know, you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm just, yeah. we'll figure out what we're going to do today. I mean, I don't know. Are you going to let me know what I need to do today? or? What and, a, and a lot of the times that comes from planning the night before. Yeah. Like, we'll sit here at night, and Logan and I will just, you know, kind of sit down, like, what do we need to get done tomorrow? Yeah. What do we need to, what do we need to get done the rest of the week? That, those are things that we need to kind of prioritize, or what do we need to prioritize? And let's kind of get those written out so it gives us kind of a map to go off of. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's successful in any business to have a plan and to, to know so where you're going. Another, what you're another doing. quote from Zig Ziglar is, uh, no, it's actually from Jim Rohn. Um, when do you start your day? When it's already finished, meaning your day, your next day is already finished the day before. Meaning you have everything written out, and then you start your day. That's what he says. When do you start your day? When it's already finished. So um, that's exactly what that is. It's like if, if you, you know, the subconscious mind is very strong. So if you read that thing that has to happen tomorrow, has to happen tomorrow, you're going to sleep on it, and you're already going to have half of the problem solved before you even get to Probably, it. probably half the notes in my iPhone Come from me laying in bed at about 11 <laughs> yeah. o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, yeah, I, so I start much. like, that's the time that I don't know why. And I don't know if everyone else's mind just runs at like a million miles an hour at 11 o'clock at night is like when it turns on. <laughs> that all of a sudden I'm like, whoa. It's a, I'm like, it's a blessing got, and a curse. I'm, I'm trying like, to shut so mine off as fast right. as I'm possible. I'm like, I have so yeah. many things to do tomorrow. And then it's like, you can't go to sleep. So I'm like, I'm going to read something. And I read something which increase like, the books I'm reading are on business, marketing, things like that. So then it, I'm reading a book that I'm like, oh, we could implement this. We could implement this. We could implement this. Right. So then I'm writing down more things. So I have this these notes set up every single day right. that kind of try to keep myself accountable. But once again, I come in, I, I think I have, like, my day is, like, nailed. Right. I go to the gym at 630. I'm like, I mean, we got the day figured out. And then I yeah. get here, and Dalton's writing on his board over there. I'm like, whoa, I didn't even think about, like, half of those things. So I'm like, definitely didn't do great at Gonna the Going to have to recreate my list now. <laughs> right. But um, that's just. No, I think shit. having a plan before you go into the next day, like I said, your, your subconscious mind will figure out a lot of the details. And, um, you know, as long as you know where you're going, you don't necessarily have to know how to get there. Because your mind's so freaking powerful, you'll figure out the details of so, so leading into that, I know you plan out your day with a list. Do you do you ever plan out strategies of how you plan to obtain more business? Do you plan that out by list, or how do you plan that out? Um, I have kind of dialed back on how to obtain more business <laughs> because we're getting Great problem to have. overloaded <laughs> with... Uh, basically, we need more machines, and uh, that costs a lot of money, um, but... We have, over the years, you know, used marketing. It's all social media. Social media marketing, I believe that is where everything is at, and it's going to stay for a while because it's in your pocket. Um, I believe that uh, basically, you know, as long as you do good work and you take care of customer service side of everything, then... The business will constantly stay flowing. Oh, and another thing is don't get too greedy because right now I could go sell a job for double what I yeah, <laughs> for bidding. I could yeah. sell a job for double what I would normally sell it for right now and somebody would pay for it. And that's not always gonna be like that. So you wanna be known as the the person that is consistent with their bid. You're not gonna go to a you know, a million dollar house and Selling the same size patio for double than what you would at a normal house. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as long as, I believe, as long as you, you know, as long as, long as you do good work, take care of your people, you're going to always have a pipeline full. Um, 
And like I said, the marketing is always going to be there too. Um, but we're dialing back to more content based stuff because we have used you guys before. <laughs> And I told you to stop <laughs> because you guys it, got filled up is, my pipeline so fast. I will say And that, I said, stop it. We need to do something different, I <laughs> which will is say, a good thing. It's not, I'm just saying. Phenomenal <laughs> thing to happen. And I will say we've seen this kind of trend and I almost want to call it like blue collar work. Like, yeah. you know, the guys that's going to go out there and work their asses off. Mm-hmm. I feel like that space is getting less. It is absolutely. the landscapers, the the plumbers, the electricians, all those guys out there. That there's less people actively going to search the hard work out there. Right. I feel like that space is getting that much better. Yeah. And we run multiple landscape companies. Right. And we're seeing the same results across all of them. Yeah. We're seeing those results come in just waves when people need work done, and it's something that. Like you said, right out the gate, it was such an influx of work. Yeah, it was that nice. you're like, Brooks, you're like, you're texting me like, slow down. I, yeah, <laughs> I think it's almost because we were we were doing something that like most landscape and lawn companies aren't doing. Yeah, it's like it's kind of a you, new space for marketing we, for companies. It like definitely this was. I mean, we were putting out like high quality content, yep. great ads, and it's not necessarily that someone needs that thing, but they have a nice house, they entertain their guests and family. You know, in the summer and fall, spring. And they're like, wow, that landscape patio looks amazing. Or that fireplace rocked in with all these chairs around it. Like, that'd be a great entertaining spot. Yeah. I want that. Didn't even think I needed it, or I don't need it, but, like, it's a cool thing to have. That is the thing, is we are kind of a knit, like, well, at least my company is. We're more of a niche. Like, nobody needs anything that we offer. Yeah. And so whenever they see something that's really cool, they're like... Like you said, I want that. Uh, but most people don't even know they want it until they right. see it on their phone that they have in their pocket every second of the day. Yeah, it's, it's whether they see it in so. person, whether they see it on their phone, is you have to see it before you know you want it. Yeah. yeah. There's there's no – the big companies um, in Kansas City, there's like five of them I would consider big ones. They don't do any of that. And I think it was kind of funny, too, like when we first talked. You're like, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, hundred percent. Like, I was, yeah. I was ready for it. I was, I, yeah, I, I saw that there was a void in the market. Yeah, I saw the exact same void that you saw, mm-hmm. in just the marketing space in general. They yeah. hadn't went after the social side, right? And like Dalton's saying, it's a want. Mm-hmm. When you can sell a want, people yeah. that are in a want space, this the the social side works so well. Oh yeah, and we were bringing we're bringing something to a space that didn't have it before. Right. And you were the one that was like a hundred percent down that <laughs> you're, you're going to go all in on everything you do. Oh yeah. And I mean, once again, I have just huge levels of respect for that. I say I jump in the pool while it's filling up. <laughs> <laughs> we will see what but, happens. But you make sir, <laughs> Steve, get out of the pool. <laughs> Still, there's no water in it. <laughs> well, my ankles are covered, so I'm good. <laughs> no, but, you went full till after something yeah, yeah, yeah. that we come at a premium cost on something. Right. And that's where I'm like, I didn't know if it would work in your space because of our cost. Right. And you were a hundred percent. You're like, let's go for it. No, like if I said, it works, that it works. one contract with Waffle House basically pays for my whole winter nut, which if you take that aside, pays for a whole year worth of marketing. Yeah. And it stops us from having to build walls and patios in the winter. So to yep. me, it's every bit of, it's nice. I don't like to get cold but, and work in the snow. But most so. thing, most <laughs> business owners don't look at things that way. Yeah. And a lot of times they're looking month over month. And where we a lot of times have to open up someone's eyes is if we catch Waffle House and say, Waffle House, you do the most amazing job in the world for Waffle House. Mm-hmm. And then another company calls you in Liberty. Right. Or a surrounding area. What if it's Longhorn or Red Robin or someone and they're like, hey, yeah. or Dre's or, house or Dre's house, <laughs> like, big name drop, pay a premium, <laughs> big I name drop. I mean, just say, I'm just I'll saying, do it for money. <laughs> but that next person calls you and they're they say, hey, we were talking to the the general manager of all the Waffle House mm. and they said you're doing an amazing job. That's still a direct correlation back to the social Absolutely. media marketing, and that's we see a lot of that with a lot of the companies that we 
work with is it, it starts snowballed. Yeah. And I would say probably 50 to 60% of the companies we currently work with, a lot of their current issues right now isn't business. Right. The heartburn kicks in. What? You always look at me, bro. I mean, we're 45 minutes in, it just (laughs) finally comes on. I thought I was going to clear it. But you're looking at me all. It's like, dude. But their issues right now is not business. It's having enough employees to handle everything they have. Right. And or opening up more locations. Right. So that's a great thing that we have on our side is I get phone calls weekly. That's like, hey, can you come meet with us? Right. And I think a lot of marketing companies are on the other side of the fence where they're like, I have to go meet with these people because they're canceling with us. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't want to work with us trying to figure out what they have to pay to get out of a contract because we don't run any contracts. Correct. And people retain working with us. Our deal is we're going to have meetings with people and they're like, we're opening up a second location. We want to double our marketing. Can you do it over here and here? And do you think you can get the same results? Right. And so, it's a cool thing to look at. And from all of us on our side, watching you just go sky high. And I don't know, it's just something really cool to, to watch as yeah. a business owner, business owner. And Absolutely. Yeah, friend I to love friend. success. Like when people tell me their successes, there's two types of people. One that'll smile and then frown inside or one that'll be like, yeah, that's freaking awesome. I'm happy for your success. I wish you can go further or I wish I can get to where you're at. Um, but you got to avoid those people that are not happy for your success. Um, there's more out there than you know. Um, so Most people are rooting for you to fail. Yeah. Absolutely. The majority. Then, then to be like, I told you you shouldn't have done this. I told you this seven years ago. Yeah. I know you've been doing it for six, but I told you seven. So Most of the time, if someone's scared to take the jump themselves, mm-hmm. then they're rooting for you to fail. My best best friend, we're no longer best friends, uh, year one and two was just telling me what a terrible decision I'm making and all that stuff. And proved him wrong. We're not friends anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Gonna have to put a little blur mark. They, they did say they weren't <laughs> like the the feedback we're getting is there should be more uh, controversial topics on the podcast. Right, right, right. Nailed it there. Episode four. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, four maybe. Right. But so the basically, the fuck haters. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Haters can me. go yeah. do their own thing. Anyways, uh, but you did bring up staffing issues, and that is another pivot. Is I started selling jobs that. Um, were to the people's skill set. So instead of selling all of specialty labor jobs, I would sell the ones that I wanted to do and then sell jobs for people that don't know as much as I do or my general manager that they can do. Um, But, yeah, that staffing issue is going to be an issue with every company that you guys work with, that, you know, everything. Uh, But if you pivot and you sell jobs that are easy, guys can do that don't have any skill and jobs that you want to do that you can make a spectacle of. That's how we've kind of navigated the, the bidding process, I guess. So Yeah. And I feel like you've done very well in the bidding process, the staffing process. And mm-hmm. I mean, A to Z on all of it as I'm trying it's as a business me. owner of I just cry myself to sleep a couple days a week. It's all good. <laughs> it's That's all the key good. To success. <laughs> That's the key to success yeah. is don't let those tears stay up here. Just let no, let no one else see those tears. Right, exactly. As, as they don't see it. But, they, uh, yeah, they go ahead and uh, cut that out of the yeah. podcast. We're going to have to break edit that out. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, I'm just teasing. Yeah, but I think you've brought a lot of very valid points to the podcast for a lot of people on um, – Different forefronts, and I think our deal is we want to have a lot of people of different business natures coming on. Absolutely. To, I want other landscapers to watch this and know that they might be on their first year, they might be on their second year, that there's a lot to come, that there's a lot of growing, there's a lot of different things. You, you looked back and said six years ago you would want to tell yourself probably a lot of personal things. Yeah. And, and Bitcoin. And Bitcoin. <laughs> and Bitcoin. <laughs> and, it's not but, funny about that. 
I do think I interrupted you earlier on the business side of six years ago. Mm-hmm. Six years ago, business wise, what would you do? I would have bought a machine as soon as I freaking could. I was always scared to buy a machine, and as soon as I did, it was a one-page application. If your credit score was between six and seven hundred, they were giving you a machine the next day <laughs> for no money down. Um, in the landscaping business, get a uh, a full-size skid or a mini skid as soon as you possibly can. The mini skid seven hundred bucks a month. Usually the big skid fifteen hundred bucks a month. I promise you, you will not miss that money. So that's what I would do in yep. the landscaping that's business. Um, and like I said, work on yourself and and get a good uh, health plan going. Yeah, and I think we talked about before the podcast even started about how a lot of landscape companies drive employment, employment, employment. Sometimes a machine can save a lot of labor hours. Do you know who shows up to work every day? <laughs> that's good <skid> steer. <laughs> that's a <skid> steer. <laughs> so, uh, I will say I have zero issues with uh, any of the MMG staff ever showing up. <laughs> right, right. Most of the time I either have to tell them to leave or <laughs> right, I'm yeah. like, uh, we, we need to go. It's too late. Uh, work's over. Mm-hmm. But uh, Shout out. If you what? break down. Shout the- out MMG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. You he's, break he's, down lucky the cost, it, he's lucky it ain't calling sick. You break down the cost <laughs> of a skid steer over 30 days. It costs less to run a skid steer than it does an employee. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I don't doubt that one bit. But so, you do have to have both. So. Yeah. So kind of wrapping everything up, you have, I know you offer a lot of services. Mm-hmm. What all services do you offer that anyone listening that's in the Metro KC area can reach out to you to get so uh, we are focusing on commercial mowing. That's our big focus this year. Um, our walls and patio side is really just flowing, but we love retaining walls. We love patios. We love uh, fire pit area, seating walls, block and brick, any place where you can have a room that is essentially outside where you gather. Outdoor living spaces is what we call it. That's our bread and butter we're super good at it. We've built that. We've built our company to take care of that need. Um, you know, we can build you an outdoor living space in three to five days, and uh, weather depending. Let's not forget about that. Um, and that's where we like to be, block and brick. Um, but like I said, if there's any commercial clients that uh, listen to this, we'd we'd love to talk to you. Um, you know, we got people that show up to work every day. <laughs> so that, that's the biggest that's, thing. That's that the biggest thing. Legitimately, is a big thing. Um, so, but yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah. Well, I'm very, very thankful that you came on the podcast today. Same. Yeah. Very much Thanks enjoyed you. you. Yeah. Uh, well, h- how would people find you if they wanted to reach out to you? So everything is uh, at Over the Field KC. We're uh, a link below. We're we're learning on the YouTube follow. side. <laughs> TikTok link below. Tic- TikTok, I do a mixture of motivation and work, so that's at Stephen Overfield. Um, but our our main three channels would be Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Snapchat. That's Over the Field KC. TikTok cool. is at Stephen. I'll be linked below. Yep. So. And uh, yeah, uh, that's where we're at. We're trying to we're trying to grow to a company to where we do quality work but also we have quality people and everybody that's on our staff does not go home struggling i've worked for companies before if you're listening to this you know i worked be- before i've worked for companies before where 50 to 70% of their staff goes home broke every day we don't want to be that company so that's where we're at we're trying to grow our company with our people so so i yeah. will double off of that that always grow a company with your people and it's you've done a phenomenal job once again. And if you want any work done by Steve and his staff at over the field landscaping, once again, links are below and thank you again for joining the M three podcast today, this Monday. And this is the time that we get a key Ricky. Woo. Thanks for listening to the M three podcast. M3 podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Want to learn more? Check us out on Instagram at Moss Marketing Group. 
on Facebook at Moss Marketing 58 or on our website at mossmarketinggroup.com.